In today's video, we're going to share with you how we've helped PGA Tour player Aaron Rye transform his bunker play, and it's took him from 188th on the PGA Tour to 62nd in the space of a few months. And we're going to share with you four simple steps that we've worked with him. Now, yes, Aaron Rye, the guy who wears two gloves and the guy who has the iron covers. So you're going to learn how to use the bounce on your wedge, how to get a consistent entry point into the sand, plus how to that beautiful high, floaty, soft landing bunker shot, which Aaron Rye had no chance of playing. He couldn't play that He before. had no chance of playing. No. Yet. So here's what you should do, really. As soon as you get in the bunker, this is what Aaron does, actually. He uses his club, the, width, the length of his club head, to decide and give him feedback where the entry point should be. So he marks the club head back, draws a line, which is about three inches behind the golf ball. When he's he, practicing, by the way. When he's practicing, when he's practicing. yeah. <laughs> and he's looking to get the club to enter really just at the front of this line here as a rough guide. This is giving him feedback. Obviously, amateur golfers tend to have an entry point that's way before here, which is disastrous. But this is gonna help shape you, direct your attention, but also give you some feedback to where you're going. So that's the first thing that he does when he's in the bunker. Let's get into the first step, step one. This was a tough one for Aaron mm. because what he would do, he'd use, he'd use a 60 degree and he'd have a square club face. What it did though, because he had a square club face with a lot of loft, the leading edge would dig in and collect a lot of sand between the face and the ball. And what that would cause was, it would cause the ball to come out, but it would roll a lot. It was like a dig and, dig and run or a duff and roll, which we don't <laughs> want in a bunker shot. Can work but it's hard to be really good playing those shots. Only works when you've got a load of green to work with. Exactly. If he was short-sided, he'd have no chance. And he did that well. So what we did, we said, look, let's, let's get the face wide open so we can utilize the bounce of the club. Let's twist the face open and get the back edge of the club really now down to the sand. And what this does, you'll see now from this, the back edge of the club now just sort of brushes and bounces through the sand. We talked about this earlier, it produces this sound. It's almost like a grandma <laughs> fart. <laughs> I can't it's believe you did it. <laughs> it's just this little, almost like a striking a match. Don't, 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 don't do both of those together, don't do both by the way. Together. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do really here is wide open face. So twist the club in your hand, lay it wide open. I'm going to use the magnet for this as well. So the face magnet here. And this will feel strange to start with if you don't do this. So we're going to, from here, twist it wide open. So when we actually address the golf ball now, this face is now straight up in the air. Now the leading edge is to the right, pointing to the right, but you'll notice from the down the line view that the loft is actually pointing up. Now, for most golfers who don't do this, when the leading edge points that way, it feels really strange. And Aaron was really struggling mm. with this for a while until we showed him the magnet, because the magnet now is pointing more up and actually facing towards the target. So we can swing pretty much on a normal path, and that loft will be moving towards the target there. I like the way he says it was a magnet, it was actually chewing gum and a tea peg <laughs> that we actually used. But just to just do that again, Andy, because the one thing that really helped Aaron with this as well was just allowing the handle to just lower. So just lowering the handle a little bit, that actually does that. So if you get the handle really upright, Andy, you can see how the loft, it is very much to the sky, but it's a little bit more to the right. The more you lower the handle, the more you get the loft pointing back toward the target. So that was the first step. And all you can this, hit one, you can hit I'm one. I'm going to hit one now. And, and all this does really, this opening the face, just allow this nice interaction with the sand. But now we've got the feedback as well here in order to where, where I want to strike the, uh, the sand here. So wide open face, it's looking towards my face, but we'll see how this club just interacts with the sand here. Again, lovely sound to nice. that, nice shot. <laughs> Pretty close to that flag as well, which Sounded I'm happy like one with. of Vera's farts. Be, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, interesting, interesting on this as well that now just do the club face again for me Andy again obviously this took a little bit of time for Aaron to get this but now you can see by doing this that the leading edge is a lot more a lot higher than it would be normally so the back edge of the club where we've got the bounce most employed that's actually going to be deployed should I say that's going to be what's going to be working through the sand really well there stopping that dig and roll exactly so step two was all about really how do we consistently get the club to enter in this point before we actually move to step three and four, which are in the golf swing, which were crucial for him. So what we wanted to do here next was that Aaron was pr pretty square on with the feet. Mm -hmm. He didn't really have the weight um, leaning onto this leg. So what we did was we said, let's get a nice wide base. Let's flare the lead foot out and let's lean into this leg. So let's get 60 to 70% of the weight into this front leg. Now, the reason we had it here was the tendency for Aaron would be, if anything, he'd get a little bit of the sand too far back behind the line. 
but as soon as we move our weight into this lead leg, that now brings the entry point a little closer to the golf ball. So we'd flare the lead foot, we'd lean into that there now, so the knee sort of moves over the front of the foot there, and as we swing, it actually sort of feels like it stays there. Now, if you're an amateur golfer, what we see so much of is we get end up back here, stay back, and this brings so much of this sand into play, which yeah. is disastrous. You can either duff it or thin it through the back. Let me show you another one, which is actually a little bit more what Aaron was doing as well and why this is so good. So just do a backswing for me. Aaron would often, and still does a little bit, when he swings down, his head moves away from the target. So again, by putting extra weight into that lead leg, we're just giving him more chance to allow for that characteristic he's got in his technique. And this made a huge difference to the consistency of the entry point here, really helped minimize the sand that he was getting. Really big one for you guys to do. Just flare the lead foot, lean on that left leg. Again, face nice and wide open here. Let's see if we can get Vera's, Vera's sound again. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, it was good. Again, two nice shots there, and we can see they're perfect in terms of the interaction with the where, where the entry point was there. All right, so look, if you are enjoying this, don't forget, Me and My Golf is all about helping you get better at golf. So make sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, we'd actually really love it if you did that for us. Okay, so step three. Um, we're almost, step three and four were the crucial ones with the golf swing. Aaron's golf swing, because of the loft being, let's say, pretty square, he would have a short swing on the way back and then more of a punch on the way through. Mm. We were very extended with the arms and it would be this sort of forward momentum and roll. Now we have a wide open face, the ball doesn't travel as far, there's less mm. energy. So now we had to say, right, now we want a long swing. So a long swing does a couple of things. It creates some speed, but also it allows us to release the club a little bit better, which we'll go into in step four. But now we said, right, let's wide open face, let's lean in, but now let's have a long swing and a much smoother motion as opposed to short, stabby digging into it, which comes out sort of with a lot of speed and a lot of roll. So let me hit a shot here now. Yeah, let's hit a couple of words. Let's see this, this, this long back swing. I think, look, we, we often get confused. We've got a short distance to cover that we feel that we've got to have a short swing. It needs to be a big swing. The sand's going to take all the energy out. The open face is going to take all the energy out. Okay, a little- a under hit, Andrew. A little longer back swing, maybe. Longer back swing. <laughs> but that's great. So. With this one now, just pay attention to how long this is going to be. And just see, again, we've only got a shortest shot here, but you'll notice again, making sure the setup's in the right place. Look at the length of the swing here. And, and I'm watching that, Andy's hands are going past his head, and then Aaron was really struggling with this. He was struggling with that length of back swing again because of the shortness of the shot. And this is something that you need to pay attention to yourself for sure. And even if you've got a short shot, you know, we still want to be able to have a fairly long swing a lot of people, when they're face close to the green, mm. they're so scared of thinning it through the back, they try and take the speed out, but that's because of the contact issues yeah. and the loft. We get the loft wide open and do the things that we can do. We can have the confidence to go a little longer. It's amazing when we're doing this. I'm just thinking back to when we've been in these videos with Aaron, when he's been practicing at events like Torrey Pines and Riviera, he's been in the bunker. If a good bunker player stepped in like Jason Day or something like that, I'd be videoing Aaron, I'd be going, oh, I'm gonna get a bit of Jason here as well. And actually we would video Jason and other players and uh, Matsuyama and, listen, and going for the noise. We were lis literally listening for the noise to play that back to Aaron and say, right, let's get that uh, Vera's Vera. Vera. Vera's part. Okay, right, so let's go into step four. So obviously we've talked about the longer swing. Step four now was about, we had to get step three right because now we had a longer swing. It enabled us time now to release the club. So instead of, instead of having this nice extension of the arms, which is great for, for long gain <laughs> and great for a low penetrating shot, we want to create the loft. We want to create the, the bounce sort of working through the sand. Now it was about allowing the club head to release past the hands. So almost getting the club head releasing and vertical as fast as possible. This created a nice amount of speed. It really utilized the bounce, but more importantly, it enabled Aaron to play some high soft landing shots when we had a tight pin. If he was short side, it would have been really difficult. Well, you were going red before. Let's go blue now, Andy. Okay. Let's, go, let's go for this one. So I need a bit more sand in here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make sure. So I really, you'll see on this one, my arms are gonna be releasing they're going to be quite narrow on the way through and the shaft is going to be very vertical quickly on this. I do not want anything like this extension. It's going to be a release and you'll see the arms are tight and the shaft is very vertical. Come on, let's see a couple of these. Let's see if you get, you've got to get one okay. with the flag length, Andy. So if we're going to the blue flag, another thing that I'm going to do to help the loft is I'm going to go even lower with this and even lower with the legs from here. Create even more loft, yeah. And again, having that little rehearsal here. So wide open, hands low. Pretty good. 
again, the benefit of not having a lot of sand there. I don't know whether I should hit this. another one there. No, you should hit another one because it's actually... actually I'm no, not no, going to hit another hit one, one Hit one more because it is inside a flag length. Okay. And look, the one thing, you know, I don't know whether you know this actually watching this video, but we've been coaching Aaron now for like 18 years. We've got loads of stories, loads of things that we've helped him with, and definitely a lot of these things can help you as well. So just let us know in the comments down below, would you like us to do more content about Aaron or even with Aaron? Okay. It's based at Sawgrass. Let's just go and play there. Oh, that's better. That's better. It could go in. You didn't want to hit another I one. I didn't want to hit another I've got it. I've got it in the locker. You're no happy problem at all. Now, aren't you? No problem at all. <laughs> So obviously we've got a before and an after here with Aaron. So first of all, look at the setup. You can see his more lead side on his left side. Look at the club face now. It's a load more open. That allows for that longer backswing, but more importantly, through the golf ball now, you can see there's a lot of loft on that face. That club is going really long on the way through. Lots of release, letting the club head go past the hands. That golf ball now can stop very quickly when it hits the green. So look, we hope that was helpful to you guys. If you enjoyed it, then make sure you check out meandmygolf.com by clicking here. This is where we do all our best content. And don't forget to download the Me and My Golf app. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.